Hi everyone, this video will be about a personal project, an environment still that I just finished, done in Blender, rendered in Cycles and GIMP for texturing. This video is to be precise a post-mortem analysis study and log of the interesting parts and things that came out during making this still. It's not strictly speaking a tutorial in the sense of going step by step, I just mentioned the most interesting bits and basically every one of these uh, topics could use his own tutorial which I hope to be making in the future. And another note before starting, this is a description of a personal project that I did just for my portfolio so the rules and the reasoning in organizing the project uh, responds to that. It doesn't reflect how you actually work when you are under a deadline with other people with a, a specific task and project in mind but it's still doing personal projects is something that everyone who does CG uh, has to do quite often to learn new stuff to improve your portfolio so I think there's rules in that too and since I've been doing personal projects the big ones once a year for like six years now uh, I'm starting to find some patterns and some best practices for organizing your personal project Let's start with the planning and block out phase. Three ways to plan a project I, I can think of, at least um, the art side, are the block out and or the concept art and just the idea, just thinking about it. In this case, being a personal project and since I'm not a 2D artist, I relied a lot more on uh, block out, meaning meshes, uh, simple cubes and uh, approximated meshes in, uh, in Blender directly. But of course there's also the idea, just generally thinking about what you want, the style and the layout and the composition. From this image, the first I saved from the first 20 minutes of work in Blender to the these ones where I start to detail and I'm not moving around anymore. Pieces, key pieces of the um, environment. I think this phase took like 10% of the total time but you have to add the fact that I decided very clearly what kind of result I wanted mm -hmm. before this and in fact in other projects like uh, normal paid projects having a supervisor that makes a block out for you or not can easily get up to 50% of the time you're going to spend on that project between doing the block out or just thinking about it to get the elements, the style and the components defined. Because of course, the later it gets in the project, the other and the more expensive it is to change stuff. So let's start from the idea and it was a matter of style, just being a personal project, deciding that I had enough sci-fi stuff in my portfolio already and I wanted to do something historical and it has a component of just uh, real world inspiration from my hometown uh, both in the Baroque style even if I just took some photos for um, texturing this is a photo from, taken from with my camera and well this of course is Google Street View and for the actual architectural style, yes, I looked at these photos. I even used some as textures, but I also looked at uh, games and other CG works, uh, in particular the style of uh, Dishonored and Bioshock, uh, because it worked both as something to have in portfolio uh, that is similar to stuff that is being done and being sold uh, currently, and just, as I said, to vary. Uh, from um, sci-fi. The other element is I was looking at these photos of my own town uh, not only for the architectural style but also for the layout and I got the idea that it might be might have been interesting to do a typical street shot which means a road and two sets of facades going in, off in the distance but with some variations so like this 
uh, closing element at the end of the road. It was interesting both in the layout and the design of the building itself. And just around the corner, I found another element that was interesting. That was this garden with a raised wall so that I could do a typical street uh, shot, but with facades on one side and something a bit more original on the other side. Another interesting element about planning and the composition of this shot is that I had some precedents from previous personal projects that I did and in particular about the composition, uh, the one I did in uh, 2011, I didn't plan too well and so I ended up with two errors that I wanted to avoid in uh, this one. One is that I didn't plan clearly so at some point I decided I would actually want to see something of the street outside so let's reposition the camera and add basically this uh, left part that wasn't planned originally and that uh, doesn't lead to anything good. and the other thing that happened maybe probably because of not thinking in advance and making changes uh, during the project is that if you look at this perspective is uh, quite fixed static uh, sort of rigid and uh, not particularly appealing uh, so when I started this personal project I looked back at the previous ones and this from 2010 had a really more dynamic composition than this one which is more static frontal and so I had some precedents from previous personal projects and some ideas from real world and just thinking about it on how to avoid those pitfalls and then in practical terms talking about theory for composition I didn't do much more than moving boxes around until they looked right but except for using composition guides in Blender uh, that is just in your camera turning on uh, in this case I use center and the thirds of course and the golden even if I probably would prefer to use thirds and fifths just to have a way to snap or better align uh, key elements to some proportional line and also check that if I have any relevant element in this quadrant then another relevant element should be in an opposite quadrant and balance just use these guidelines to help you balance the composition in this particular case the biggest thing that I kept changing is the final of this street that was supposed to be in the center of the picture but not too much meaning uh, I kept moving slightly the um, facades and especially the inclination and the position of this final element so that it wouldn't be the focal point of everything to have more balance importance of these facades to compare to this one and this one and some Tweaks are really subtle, most of them are really subtle, but like the, the front arch, it's a curve element, so in itself is a pain to deal with uh, while modeling, but when you are still at this point, you can quite quickly change things like this is a perfect arc, it's an ellipse, but it's a continuous arc, well, at some point I added a bit of a straight section just because it was too oppressive and it would cut too much of the rest of the environment and it would look a bit better if I could see these corners here so I added a bit of space in between same for the closing facade that moves slightly and changes slightly alignment and you have to imagine that with the guidelines on top so I would try to align uh, and decide that like this at this point the lamppost was in the dead center of the picture and I noticed that aligning this edge 
of the facade, even just a bit to the right of the center, would make it look a lot less uh, important. And also, just tweaking slightly the dimension of this building in the end, it's no big deal when you're at this point, but when you start adding uh, the windows and all the architectural detailing, uh, adding one or more window uh, that would change. This is of course just an array, so I could really quickly add one more window, but then I would, having started detailing all this area, I would have had some issues and probably had to remodel all of this and later on also retexture if I had, like in the case of these objects, a uh, baked dirt map that would be wasted. Very last tweak uh, I did, and it's the road. And this has been done after starting texturing, and after texturing basically everything else, but luckily for efficiency, I mean, before texturing the road itself. So you can see this uh, work in progress images start with flat material and end up with a uh, textured material, but this is still far from the final material for the road. And at this point, between the first shader I made for the sidewalks and the last one, and that's the shading and texturing thing we'll see later, but between these two, you can see changes in the sidewalk. A slight change, but significant in the dimensions and the proportion and rotation of this wall. Uh, this was a bit too late maybe, but it seemed important to reduce a bit the importance of this paneled wall, which is nice, but really doesn't deserve all this space. To this, and also I just got the idea that this straight road, this very clear uh, perspective lines were really uh, too straight and too clear, so this nudge in, in the street help to uh, make this a more uh, realistic and less obvious composition. And to conclude with composition, one funny uh, thing that happened, at least uh, funny for you listening, not so funny for me being <laughs> there, was that I got some, f some very good feedback just the moment that I had published on um, on Blender Artist as finished image and the feedback was about the, the composition and I got it in the CG Society forums and you can see here my um, almost final image and the uh, mock-up that was done and this is some really good elements that if you look at this uh, some really interesting stuff was done uh, well there's some lighting aspect so you can see that there's much better highlighting of the final piece uh, but also like flipping the image uh, well one of the general rules is that if you flip the image and it looks better in one way than the other then it's unbalanced uh, which makes sense because we might have a preferred reading direction being used to read text in a frame so left and right is not, th not the same, but if the image is balanced, then it should look nice in both directions. Uh, I, I don't think this is much the question here, that flipping makes a big difference, or better, it does in uh, conjunction with cutting part of this arch here, so that you have not a symmetric uh, bridge or archway but the arch at uh, the inner part of the arch is an element on the left side but it's almost non-existent on the right side so it's not duplicated it's less fixed less symmetric uh, more dynamic and this way also this part takes a much bigger role making the image look even less symmetric actually this works, uh, as I said, I was surprised to see how better it worked, but in terms of composition, in terms of modeling and showing 
model stuff showing an environment with lots of stuff to look at uh, it I didn't want to uh, to give that much priority to the facades compared to the garden or the end building but anyway this is still a uh, really interesting I think this is much more cinematic and I wouldn't doubt that as a frame of an animation this would work better but this might be just as good it's not better for sure I don't think it's better my version but it might be just as good as a, a panorama image that you're supposed to look at and wander around just looking at a fixed still but in general this is a personal project and another like general lesson that I that I learned about uh, CG is that is uh, always best when it's the work of more than one person with different uh, mindsets so I wouldn't argue that I'm a modeler I do models and shaders and I get to the point where the lighting uh, means uh, making the practical lighting of the set work with the shaders and the textures but when it gets to the point of camera position and photography in general to get a striking image a good contrast uh, gradients of uh, luminance etc then I'm perfectly aware that in a even small team of CG artists I would let that to someone else and it's it's also sometimes a difficult question to put the right uh, point where your specialization ends and other people work starts so I try to, I, I try to push for uh, doing lighting because I, I like it but I know that I do lighting in terms of making the shaders work with a practical lamp lighting in terms of being the light director the photographer that decides the mood of the scene I'd much rather leave it to someone else if I can because I know there is people who has uh, specialized and studied a lot more dedicated a lot more of their time to that the photography aspect about modeling this scene the modeling phase if we look at the sequence of work in progress images that I have starts overlapping a bit with the block out so some elements that I could already start detailing knowing that I would move them maybe but the general dimension were already working and the modeling phase actually ends uh, quite far along during the tweaking and after being done with uh, most of the textures like this part here this dolphins and uh, the gate for the garden I actually tweaked and changed the base quite a few times when I was already finishing finalizing the compositing uh, this because until I was at the stage of I still have something else to model I was satisfied with the result but then I decided to add some more detail the kind of sculpted uh, refined detail that would have worked well in this area but then I wasn't at all satisfied with the realism and the constructive aspect of this thing that is if I'm making a model of a garden gate with a sculpted dolphin it's not just about having the dolphin itself uh, look decent or uh, this uh, swirl and sort of capital like element uh, being modeled correctly but also making it in a way that actually looks like the stuff that has been done in past centuries and another note about the modeling this is the final wireframe uh, render over the ambient occlusion rendered image showing you the topology of my meshes which isn't anything special and actually in some areas it's quite bad and uh, but I think that's okay uh, I mean the 
care and attention to good topology is something that is uh, really important whenever you have to deform, animate, add subdivision surface. So for character artists, it's like a given that the better the topology, uh, the more professional, the better is your work. Talking about the environment, I think the standards for topology can be quite a bit more relaxed unless there's any of those reasons like uh, adding subdivision surface or animating. And in fact, you can see a few uh, areas where this topology not being great actually affected the final result. So these arches here, uh, they were kind of a nasty situation where you want to have the bricks UV done quickly, so you could use a box mapping, but then you want to have full control because you want to have the bricks curve. And that you can do with box mapping, you have to unwrap. And then also very late in the project, I decided to use uh, subdivision surface and displacement to get real displacement on these bricks and a few of the bad decisions and the fact that I didn't care much about the topology in the first place then showed up as deformations in, uh, in the UV. But actually this was a test, a decision that I took early on that since the material was going to be a mix of showing the bricks and not showing them because they were they are covered by plaster in some areas, I could get away with doing UVs manually without caring too much about the topology and, and everything else. But this worked in this situation because I could just hide them. And so in, it's something to keep in mind. I, I generally think that when you do environment modeling, uh, you have to be honest and environment modeling is doing lots and lots of boxes, uh, but doing lots of boxes fast, being able to manage them. So when you have then 10 million polygons or a scene with 10 million elements, uh, doesn't matter the poly count, uh, you can handle them, you can manage them and sort them. And also uh, it's about getting the proportions and the, the dimensions of these uh, millions of boxes just right, because then there are some constructive aspects like uh, the height of a railing, which is between 90 centimeters and one uh, meter and 10 and uh, also about railings, the width of a uh, um, metal support for this kind of railing that is not three centimeters, but is like five millimeters. And so rather mm, than uh, uh, thinking about anything really clever or any really clever technique to model environments, uh, it's about doing basic stuff but organizing it very well being very fast at doing it and, and so yeah just doing millions of boxes very fast and very precisely in terms of the dimension of each box so let's see some practical techniques and mostly about uh, layers scenes and dupli objects uh, as a way to control and organize your scene of course, you can use a single scene where each layer has some elements, some areas assigned to that layer. And I generally do that using the top row of layers and keeping the bottom row for uh, backup models, like models that, have, um, that I kept with modifiers not applied. But it's generally not enough at some point you want to have not just instances technically it's the same uh, an instance it, it, it's fine if you have a thousand uh, tiles just to instance them for the technical aspect but for managing for the human aspects you might want to have uh, like in this case tiles are just instances they are in one of these layers and they are instanced but the pebbles on the um, ground, for example, they are scattered with a particle system and I find it more efficient to have that original uh, pebble or kit of pebbles 
not in the same scene where you already have the road and the particle system and everything else, but to create a separate scene. And in this case, I did it for the rocks, for the vegetation, that is the trees, but also the, the foliage, and for these props, that is basically the lamppost, which are a simple element, meaning that they don't depend much on what you have around them. They're just a stick with a lamp on top, but with a lot of modeling details. Uh, and it's just much easier to have a scene for them and a few layers for them and then group them and load them in the final scene as a dupli group I just by shift A add the group instance and pick the name or anyway pick an empty object and use the group duplicate option and then you have your lamppost as a single element or well in this case the two elements because the glass was better to live separate so I could turn it off for volume rendering. Okay now some elements that are part of modeling and part texturing and they have in common the fact that they were sort of problematic assets that I redid or did incrementally uh, sometimes it's a similar thing uh, but but not exactly the same like the road was done I have this image here with the various steps and I saved it because uh, it kind of showed that there are several variations, iteration or different revisions of the, the sidewalk texturing and actually the same happens with the road itself where it looks like I'm trying different designs but uh, I wasn't planning a dirt only street but something paved but first I laid the material for the ground then I added one layer of uh, pavement with these stones and tried a uh, center uh, lane uh, reinforced part that is modeled. It's some boxes like this are individual boxes and not just mapping. And I basically knew that in the end uh, I would probably have to first just, just test one lane and then the correct design uh, would be with two for, for carriage wheels. This process, I think, makes sense. Uh, you go incrementally when you know that you have a complex material like in three layers, three different materials overlapping on the same surface. You can do one and then the others or same uh, thing is for the tiles and uh, the sidewalk that the first material I tried wasn't at all working was just a bunch of tileables. It wouldn't at all give the impression of uh, having enough weathering. And but I still tried it, and I I think sometimes uh, you have to try the cheap solution first, like just putting some tileables and having a model that is not sculpted. It doesn't have a specific dirt and weathering map uh, to chip the edges and have details everywhere or have displacement. And then judge the result with a render and see what more it needs until you get to, sometimes you get to the point of then having uh, actual meshes for each tile with a bump map on and displacement on this sidewalk uh, but in other cases you do the same process and you stop where it works in this case there's no specific work done for this textures for these elements. It's all kits of textures that I already had prepared, like the tiles and the same tiles I used to add bump and a bit of displacement to this sidewalk. And a different set of tiles does this. And this ledge is actually from a um, generic concrete texture for uh, concrete edges, ledges or pillars that I made for tube when I recycled for this sidewalk. So that was incremental and I wouldn't say that even if you can see all the changes I went back and corrected and redid work. I was just adding 
layer uh, after layer. This case instead, the garden gate, it's a bit different. And there, yeah, I redid it. And I wasn't satisfied, so I tried different solutions. And it was one of the parts that bothered me the most. Another similar situation, something that I really did change during the modeling phase is this facade, this railing. And I basically at some point before texturing, before making the dirt map, I realized that it was a bit too much uh, uh, like Art Nouveau style and it wouldn't fit too well with the rest. Uh, with everything else I was going more to some sort of baroque style and I actually been working that day uh, watching a like three hours documentary about uh, baroque architecture uh, a documentary that by the way you can find on uh, on YouTube and on sites like Documentary Heaven, Documentary Storm there's quite a bunch of architecture and history documentaries that can be uh, good to watch while you work to get ideas and in this case I just copied a railing that was in a famous historical building in Rome I don't remember which follow the reference and just changed it here the garden gate was a bit more complicated and you can actually see that the first version that I had was block out version but I was never satisfied with this version uh, probably because I didn't follow very closely any photo reference so as a drawing, as single elements like having a dolphin hand or um, this kind of swirl and uh, capital like element uh, all these elements make sense by themselves but I think you can actually tell in all of these variants that this is not something that a real architect uh, centuries ago would have been. There is something wrong in the constructive logic of this piece and that's something that doesn't happen if you decide I need a gate for the, uh, for the garden, I'll take a picture and copy it completely. If you start picking one element here and there then uh, uh, you'll probably have a lot of revisions before you can be happy with it because in a way you always have to know that as an artist you draw these things, you look at them but you don't know how they are built and that is going to show in the final model. So uh, lots of various tweaks. At some point the, the very last tweak was removing this column and uh, making the support simpler and before that was the base, I made the base bigger and heavier because I thought it made more uh, constructive sense to that's the question about redoing, doing incrementally and in the case of this uh, gate if this was a project with a tight deadline I wouldn't probably gone this way of just trying new versions and trying new elements and try to design it myself uh, after seeing the first like one or two iterations and that it wasn't working that was always not convincing I would have probably gone for maybe a different uh, concept, a different layout, but something where I could find a good reference uh, and just stick to it and get it done much faster. On the other hand, uh, if you can't find a good reference, and in this case it wasn't easy because I couldn't find uh, this kind of element with the wall and the garden and uh, uh, in this kind of context, I couldn't find an exact reference that was this ornate but that was a good spot in the picture to put a lot of decoration. If you have the time and you can afford all the redos, that's a way to do something new, maybe push your skill and everything. But if you're on a tight deadline, in this case I would have just changed the design, stuck to a single photographic reference. And this concludes part one of this video tutorial post-mortem. You can watch part two on my YouTube channel.